Condemnation will kill me. Condemnation says you're worthless, you're useless, you're a sinner. You can't be anointed. You can't be blessed. God's not with you. God's against you. He's ticked off. He's mad. You clean it up or God's going to go on a war against you. That's the kind of condemnation and shame you'll never get out from under because God's too big and you're too little. And it'll kill you. Yeah. And it should. It's meant to crush you. Yeah. How can you stand in the face of that God? You're a bug and He squashed you to death. And yes, there's churches where that's what you'll hear. Yeah. You get in one, run as fast as you can. Yeah. Don't even wait till the message is over. Yeah. Just get out. But if you run because you're challenged, or you run because you were asked to get a little introspective, get ready. Because the dragon that was in your basement when you got out of the car is still there when you get back in. Waiting. This is, a, this is who am I? Where am I? It's a question God asks because... He has to. Genesis chapter 3. Here's the, here's the sad part is when I sat down today to go, okay, here's what we're going to minister tonight. I was going to get you all the way through all the, the Adam and Eve and the Cain questions. And we just asked one question. And it took an hour. <laughs> so I want to try to cover at least one more. I really want to talk about Cain in the morning. Because God asked him two questions. These, these have a lot to do with your soul, but they have a lot to do with your relationships, particularly with your, yourself. And when I say self, I mean your spouse, because I see you as one flesh. And so with your spouse, the Cain questions are you and your neighbor. Because Abel is not blood of, he's not flesh of Cain's flesh. They're brothers. But... There's a difference in the way you're questioned because there's some issues you have with your neighbor you don't have with yourself. And so we'll get into the Cain stuff because I think in an hour right now where the world is really trying to burn, really trying to burn, we need to ask the Cain questions. Yeah. And so, man, don't miss in the morning, right. all right? But I want to show you another one, at least one more real fast. I promise I won't stay there quite so long. Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. So he said, I heard you. Here's Adam. I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Verse 11, he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you should not eat? Let's try to cover these two together, okay, real, real quick. Look at the top of the verse, who told you you were naked? God's next question to Adam is, who told you that you were naked? Not how did you become naked, God knows he made him that way. Right. Please remember this, God created Adam already naked. He didn't become naked when he ate from the tree. He just realized he was naked. It's not that the tree contains high knowledge. It's that the tree gives you information in obtained by your conscience rather than obtained by the Spirit. And information obtained by your conscience is information that can be corrupted by what you see and hear going on around you. Yeah. Therefore, you can begin to assume you are something because you do something rather than you are something because you are a new creation. And so what happens when we live in the area of conscience is we start to listen to what other people have to say about us and we determine our value based upon what's going on around us. Who told you you were naked? You were always naked. I wanted you to get that information, but I wanted you to get it my way. See, here's what I truly believe. I believe that God's way was to, for Adam to grow into the understanding of who he was by eating the tree of life. Yeah. I think for a long time in the church, we've got so wrapped up in the natural in physical man, that we preach the tree of life as the way to live forever only. That's definitely in there because God says we need to get him out of the garden lest he eat the tree of life and live forever. Why did the tree of life exist? The tree of life is representative of the life that comes from the tree. Who hung on the tree and died for you? Jesus. The life you receive comes from the tree. The tree of life is in the book of Revelation. It's in the New Jerusalem, lining the, the shoreline of the, of the river of life. The tree of life has leaves that heal the nations. There's such power in the tree. There's revelation in the tree. I believe that God wanted Adam's eyes to be opened to who he was by feasting on the life of God. Instead, his eyes were opened to what he saw and he lost consciousness of who he was. We know this because the deception given to Eve is, God knows if you eat this, you'll be like him. She was already like God. She was lied to. 
And the perception that she had that she would be like God if she ate from that tree was a lie from the enemy. The reality is, is they were always naked, but they came into that understanding the wrong way. Who told you you were naked is more than other people telling you lies. It's also you trying to determine your value through the flesh. 2 Corinthians again, chapter 5, Paul says this in verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him this way no longer. Please look at the first part of that verse and remember it, never forget it. We don't regard people according to the flesh. We do not regard people according to the flesh. We do not determine people's value according to the flesh. We do not regard them as people based upon what they do. We regard them as people on something higher. You know what the next verse is right here? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What's Paul trying to say? I don't regard you according to the flesh because I can't tell if you're saved or not by looking at you. I don't know who you are inside by looking at you. You're a new creation. You're in Christ. So my determination can't be on the natural. Guess what? If I can't determine who you are on the natural, neither can you. Who told you you were what you think you are? Who told you you're that? This is a big, big question. Our young people need to hear this. This is a question I ask my 15-year-old daughter a lot. Who told you that about yourself? Who told you that about your face? Who told you that about your hair? Who told you that about your body? Who told you that about your self-consciousness? That's not, that's not who you are. That's what the world thinks about you. That's what they had to say to you. Now, you can determine your value if you choose to on that, and you'll live hell the rest of your life. Because you'll always try to please everybody else for how you look, how you move, how you talk, how, what you, how you do your hair, what kind of clothes you wear. It'll always be everyone else that controls you. It will never be you that controls you. You will surrender your own autonomy to everyone around you and become a slave to the system of this world. Who told you you were naked? Come on. Who told you that's the way you're supposed to look? Who told you that's the way you're supposed to act? Who told you that's the way you're supposed to do in society? Yeah. I didn't tell you that. Did your Heavenly Father tell you that? Did the Holy Spirit tell you that on the inside? Or is that what you saw on Twitter? Is that what you learned on TikTok? Is that what Instagram taught you? Is that what you saw on YouTube? Yeah. The answer to that most of the time is yes. And we go, well, they just ought to stop watching. But we do the same thing because we've been told how we ought to live and what we ought to drive and where we ought to work and what we ought to do and what we ought to believe in. And we've got our talking points yeah. and we've got our political stands and we've got our formulas and we've got our beliefs and we filter everything through what we think we're supposed to think rather than what we know is in our hearts. Yeah. And a lot of times we're just becoming what somebody else told us we ought to look like rather than saying, who told me that about myself? I'm not what they say I am. I'm what my father says I am. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of the king. I don't have to live this way. I don't have to listen to that. I don't have to go chase that rabbit and go down into that darkness. I know who I am in Christ. And Paul would say it this way. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. What day? Whatever day you're in. Whatever day you're in, he's able to keep you. In the palm of his hand, he says, you and I together. But if, if you start listening to the visible and the tangible and the natural, it's a whole lot easier to follow the beast than it is to follow the slain lamb. 